Uh, so traditionally, and here's, here, here's the difference, traditionally, uh, when we think about an algorithm, we say we have data input and then we use an algorithm, you know, what, what to replace it with, right? Recipe, we have data, we have a recipe of what to do with this data, we observe reality, observation data, then we have a recipe of what to do with it, and then we compute some kind of goal output. That's how we traditionally do it. Now, what the machine learning paradigm does, it turns that on its head. It has its data and the goal output, and then it asks the computer to compute the best recipe. Now, let me break that down. So traditionally, what we do is we, and that's how also we teach in classes, right? We have data, and then we have some observation of reality, or we're given something. We have two, one, two, three, something that, for example, we count in reality, we observe. And then we give you the recipe, the algorithm of what to do with it. So, okay, so multiply that, and then we compute the goal output. And that's how we still teach, like here in the educational sector, that's how we teach. That's how we teach our students, that's how we think. Uh, and that's how we try to solve the machine intelligence problem from the beginning. We try to find out, okay, so what is the algorithm? What is the recipe in order to compute something? We focus on the rules. Now, what the machine learning paradigm did, it turned it on its head. It said, Here's the data and here's the output. Now find me the best way of how I can combine the data in order to create the output. Find, compute me the best algorithm. Now you might say, okay, you can multiply two times one is two times two is four, four times three is 12. Yes, you can do that, but you could also do that. If you don't trust me, check it out. Two plus one is three. 3 squared is 9, plus 3 is 12. Now, what's the better way? Uh, well, that depends on, you know, there are many ways lead to Rome, <laughs> as they say. And you can get to Rome all these different ways. Now, you can classify some sub-constraints. For example, you could say, you want to get to Rome fast. Or you say you want to get to Rome safe. Or you say you want to get to Rome with most energy efficient. I mean, these, there might be some trade-offs also between them, and you can then define that. But what the machine learning does, it explores the, all the different possibilities and finds the optimum. There might be local optima and total optima. And so there, there are different ways that the search goes in these manifolds, these high-dimensional spaces that it searches. And then you can also fine-tune it a little bit and say, like, no, I, I, want, it, I want it more like that, right? But that's what the machine does. It basically, it, it looks for the best way of doing things. Now, applying machine learning to some of the examples I showed you before, the idea would be that I have different data, different inputs. So, for example, if you take you know, companies from the Stone Age here. Um, and then we say, yeah, you want to compute something. You want to compute some raw material out of, you have a mine and you want to compute some copper out of it or gold out of it or whatever you, you're trying to compute. What's the best way of combining this input in order to compute my output? So the machine learning computes the best way of doing things. It computes the recipe itself. So that's why Dominguez calls it the master algorithm. It's the algorithm that computes algorithms. And the idea is you can apply it to different things, even to problems that we haven't solved yet. For example, you have a world full of hunger, of war, of climate crisis and, and, and racism, and what you want to compute is a world full of love. So Artificial intelligence, machine learning. If I give you all the data, can you help us to solve the world's problems? Now, of course, there's a caveat to it because if you have a machine that can solve problems that we couldn't solve before, that means it extrapolates on data that we give it the data, and then it goes, they call the technology out of distribution, right? It makes, it, it extrapolates and say like, well, you have this world full of hunger, war, climate crisis, and, and racism, and so forth. Now, you can do this in order to make the world a better place. Now, if the machine is as powerful, then potentially this can also go the other way around, right? The machine could also then think like, well, <laughs> actually you could also like blow all of that thing up. And, and that's why if we, if we go that way, and I just like very quickly now went, went to save the world or to destroy the world, but you know, all of this is, is, is embaked in this paradigm because the paradigm is that the machine comes up 
with the best way of doing things. And if the machine would decide that the best way of doing things is to get rid of humans, then we might have a problem. 